All right, guys, I've been getting requests uh, to do one of these videos for a long time, and uh, it'll be kind of a short one, uh, but there's people that have wanted to see a boat tour of my boat, kind of the setup and the way I've got it set up for fishing, for chasing catfish and some of the other fish that I chase. Uh, I fish out of a Carolina skiff. It's a 19 footer. It's a 198 DLV. It's a semi V bottom. Uh, it's not the flat bottom like the DLX, but uh, it's got a little more, um, a little more shape to it, but it's still a rough ride boat. That's uh, the trade off to it. It's got a lot of room, uh, very, very wide beam, very high sides, very high transom, very safe boat all around. Uh, the downside is, again, uh, it doesn't handle rough water really well, unless you put some weight in it. Once you get some weight in it, it's a different story. Uh, it'll plow into the water a little bit better, but it is not a deep V uh, by any means. Uh, so that's the trade-off, uh, trade-off with everything you get in a boat. Don't ever forget that. Uh, also has a shallow draft. It'll sit in about 11 inches of water. So those are the good things. The other thing is it's affordable. Uh, they don't make this model anymore, the DLV. They've got a new one now that is a, um, a little bit of a little bit of a hybrid kind of getting a little more v but not a total v hole but um uh, it's fiberglass a lot of room center console lots of room fishability uh 306 degrees around the boat uh but i'll take you around here and show you a couple of things that i have to make it suited for my type of fishing now one of the first things i did as soon as i got my boat was i put a trolling motor on it my buddy carrie vandenbrook helped me uh install the thing on the uh, boat we figured out the best place to put it some people it's on the bow some people it's off to the side kind of depends what you're doing how you're working it um i throw a cast net off the front do some other things off the front of the boat so i kind of wanted it off to the side out of the way so the shaft wasn't sticking up uh, mine is only a 12 volt motor the trolling that i do is very slow um, and up to this point, I haven't needed anything bigger. Uh, 24 volt, if you can get it, it's fine. 36, depending on what you're doing, where you're fishing. If you're doing some stuff out in some big swift current, you may need it. But for me, I do a lot of reservoir fishing and uh, the 12 volt works fine. It's got the iPilot, it's got the remote control that I can hold, hang around my neck, control it from anywhere in the boat. And uh, it served me well. The other thing is it doesn't take a lot of batteries and uh, you know, tying up a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of money in that and keeping those things running not to mention the weight uh that you're adding to the boat but mine's a Minn Kota they all work pretty good they all have similar functions and uh that's uh, one of the first things I put on my boat when I got it another thing you need is anchor storage mine is in here obviously the anchor's out you gotta have anchor storage uh typically the way I fish especially fishing reservoirs uh you need two anchors you need one out the back you need one out the front if you're just fishing rivers current all the time you can get by with one anchor uh it's good to have two on the boat because you will lose them eventually if you fish long enough no matter how many zip ties you put on them and breakaways uh you'll wrap one in something you're not going to get it back from so I always bring a second one with you I've got two of them one in the for the bow one for the back and then i've got an extra one in here as a dan fourth that i keep for some other conditions down toward the beach it's got chain on it uh but yeah definitely have some kind of anchor storage some people put them in baskets if you got a smaller boat you can put them in milk crates and totes and that kind of thing uh, i like having mine stowed away out of the way uh, so there's less rope and just stuff to trip and get tangled up in especially doing guy trips uh it's stuff you don't want out there on the deck for people uh they can get tangled up in and fall and not to mention me falling right back here guys is where my rear anchor stays i got uh, some storage there for the rope so you can see she's out the back right now now one of the biggest questions for most people is the rod holder setup uh how do you have your rod set up uh, do you use a uh, a rod rack i do not use a rod rack uh for me the rod racks i've seen uh have been annoying uh in that i like having the open space on the back of my boat i like being able to get to my hatches get to my anchors get to my motor if i need to should something get tangled in it i can deal with it deal with it quickly i can net fish at the back of the boat fish around an anchor i like access to the back um, so having a big spanning bar across the back is not something i'm a big fan of so i've got mine set up around the outside perimeter of the boat on the gunnels uh the transom and two in the floor of the boat it's different for everybody and i'll go ahead and tell you that right now depending on what your fishing situation is your scenario how your boat's built uh it's going to vary so there's no right or wrong way uh the right way is what works for you so keep that in mind when you're setting up these rod holders i use monster rod holders uh i like these uh before this i had some of the 
tube rocket launcher style ones on some of my old old videos you'll see but uh steve douglas makes this model here that i can put rods in in three different positions and uh i think that is very important especially if you do different types of fishing i do fish for other stuff besides catfish i fish for uh stripers crappie uh, and do some saltwater fishing so having some of those you know varying angles on the rods i think is important and that's why i go with the monster rod holders uh he makes several different models he makes rod racks he makes nets even the net i use uh, is made by them so uh, yeah check out monster rod holders if you're interested in looking at some a lot of good ones out there i like his i know steve known him for a while and uh, i like his products but that's kind of the way the rod holders are set up all right guys one thing you got to have on your boat boat got to go you got to have you a motor. I've got a 90 horsepower Suzuki four stroke, about 13 year old, years old now. I've had it since uh, I got the boat. Uh, it's done well, served me well. I would like to upgrade to a 115. I always tell people get the biggest motor you can get, but I understand budgets. Uh, that is what kept me from getting a bigger motor when I got this one. So that is the plan to uh, upgrade the motor at some point, put something a little bigger on there. Love Suzuki, love their products. And uh, that'll be the next motor I put on. Well, one thing I suggest you put on the boat is something to keep your bait alive, uh, whether that be a built-in live well or a bait tank, a removable bait tank. I've got both. I've got uh, two bait tanks at home uh, that I can put on the boat, take on and off, depending on how I need them. I've got a big Shad Shack 50-gallon tank that I can put on here if I'm carrying a lot of bait somewhere and need a lot of live bait. Then I got a 20 gallon creek bank uh, that's a little smaller uh, for shorter day trips. But then uh, the most important thing is I've got a built in live well in the back. I've got a, a 20 gallon tank that's built in. Fresh water flow only, no filtration or aeration, but it keeps bait alive fine. Bait does not die as long as you are giving it fresh water. Uh, fresh water, fresh circulating water, uh, fresh water in, old water out is the best way to keep bait alive or fish in a tournament. Uh, aeration is great if you're running up and down the road, running up and down the lake, but fresh water is key. So having something like that on your boat is uh, another good thing to have. Uh, removable bait buckets and storage containers and everything, they'll, they'll work fine. I mean, if that's what you got, go with that. Uh, but there's a lot of good options for uh, bait tanks and uh, keeping bait alive on your boat. And that's one of the important things that I like having on mine. Now as for my electronics, uh, I keep a VHF marine radio on here. I do some stuff down at the coast and uh, I like having communications with somebody. Uh, it doesn't work really, that, I mean, it works on the lake, but just the way lakes and rivers are, uh, one, there's not that many people on them. And two, uh, these radios pretty much work line of sight. So with the trees and bends and turns, really there's not too many people you can hit with them. Uh, but down at the coast, different story. They can save your life. Uh, as far as sonar goes, it is some older technology. Uh, it is not even touch screen. Uh, you have to push buttons to make stuff move. But uh, it has structure scan, side scan, mapping, traditional sonar, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it is a great uh, unit works great gives me everything i need uh, there's some great stuff out there guys and i get asked about that all the time my advice is always spend as much as you can afford to spend uh, as far as stuff you must have you need traditional sonar and i think you need mapping all the other stuff live view live scope structure scan down sand scan side scan all that it's great it's great if you can afford it it's great if you can get it they are great tools to have in your toolbox but most important, period, is having the mapping and just a traditional sonar. You can catch all the fish in the world if you've got those tools and know how to use them. Now, one of the other important things I keep on my boat is a bimini top. I don't have a T-top. Uh, one of the things with a T-top, a T-top is a fixed structure. So depending on where you're fishing at, there's some places you can't get into. We've got some low-lying bridges on some of these lakes that I fish. You can't get under those bridges. Uh, I've been tempted to get a T-top because of the hard top. Uh, uh you've got room to store stuff and that's kind of a nice and it's kind of a plus uh but this here you can move up and down take it off and all that kind of stuff so uh i like it for rain it's a rainy day today it's nice to have a break from the rain the biggest thing is sun though uh, i use this thing more in the sun than i do in the rain it's a great little tool uh not so much a tool but a great little comfort item to have to keep you out here uh, I have no problem fishing all day long in the summer heat if I have to, as long as I got some shade. And uh, having a bimini top is a big, big game changer. I would suggest getting a taller one. I got one a little bit taller so I can get my rods underneath it. Uh, and I can stand up and walk around without ducking. So I uh, don't have an enclosure. Haven't got there yet. Um, 
I keep saying uh, I think I've got a few more years before I'm going to get to the point where I can't stand the fish when it's cold. Uh, they're nice, they're great, um, but um, I do have a few issues with them. They're great when you need them and you want them, but uh, they can, for me, I just seem like they're kind of a pain to deal with and put up. But when the conditions are bad and horrible, uh, you're glad that you got one. So if you got the money to get one, get one. That's great. Uh, for me, well, I'm just dumb and just gut it out for now. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.